Now you're trying to help people understand how to make money legally. And I have to say, it's a very timely offering because we started the show with this New York Times Siena poll showing how awful people feel about the economy. I mean, they feel yeah. awful about it. Virtually no one approves of where we are. And more than two thirds of the country say we are going in the wrong direction economically mm. and otherwise. And so to feel like someone could empower themselves in this terrible economy by something like this book is, is, a, is a hopeful thought. You know, everybody would wanna do it. So could somebody like I, somebody like me, take this book and actually make smart investments? Absolutely. Not, the whole point of writing this book is in the past, I've, you know, I've, I've coached entrepreneurs, I've taught entrepreneurship, sales, marketing. One thing I never really spoke about, which is something that I knew probably as good as anyone out there in the world was how to make money on Wall Street. Right. So, you know, finally, after many, many years and seeing where the economy was going and actually experiencing it in my own family, my brother in law was getting whipsawed, destroyed. He's a very successful guy, very smart. And I watched someone who's very smart, very educated, very sharp, getting obliterated by doing all the wrong things with his investment portfolio. So I coached him through, you know, you know, how to change his portfolio and redo it in a way that would set him up for long-term success. And that's really was the, was, was the inspiration for writing this book. It took me about 18 months to write it. And not because I didn't know what the strategies were going to be. I knew from the start what I was going to be talking about, but I knew that if I didn't write it in a really kind of laugh out loud, funny, irreverent way, like people wouldn't really enjoy it or read it as much because, you know, the information for investing is out there, but it's very dry, very boring, very technical. So people don't embrace it. So I, you, I wrote this book in a way that's a very funny, ironic voice, but it gives you like literally the keys to the kingdom for building a world-class portfolio that will allow you to retire extremely wealthy, whether you're wealthy now or not. And that's the beauty of this. You don't need a lot of money and especially in an economy, as you said, you're 100 percent right. And you, you know, there's a lot of problems systemically in the U.S. economy. There's even more problems politically, which we I know we agree on that. Right. And, what's, you know, when you see what's going on on college campuses, it makes you stand for the whole world. But the fact is, is that the one solution that you can have for yourself, for your family is make a lot of money and, and invest it wisely. So you're set up for the future because you can't count on the government. You can't count on a booming economy when you're retired. So you need to take matters into your own hands. And, and the way you do it is not by hiring a stockbroker, putting your money in a mutual fund or, or, or like a managed mutual fund or trying to find the next, you know, pipe from a hedge fund or penny stock or crypto coin is a very simple proven way that anybody, anybody can secure their future through proper investing. And that's really what I lay out in the book. It's a turnkey solution for anybody, even if you don't have a lot of money. Well, especially because I, we, I know we don't like to talk about this as a country. The re Republicans want to ignore it. Democrats want to ignore it. But you're probably not going to get your Social Security. If you're 40 or younger, there's probably not going to be Social Security for you. We, we like to lie and say, oh, no, it's like, you know, it's, we're only going to mess with it for like people who are in their 20s. Bullshit. The whole program is going under. They're, they're really out of money. Social Security and Medicare. Medicaid's also in trouble. So they just keep ignoring all of this. I mean, even the trustees who run the program say at minimum in 10 years, you're going to get 20% less. And so, so yeah, might, you can't rely around, on those. It, yeah, exactly. You can't rely around, on those to fund your retirement. Yeah. Well, it might be around when we're old. I think it will be, but it'll be enough to pay for your diapers when you're in a nursing home. That's about <laughs> it. If you think you're going to rely on that to pay your rent and your expenses, I mean, think again, right? So you're hundred percent right. And, and that problem is only getting worse. The, the political divide is so intense right now that nothing good is getting accomplished in, in, in Congress and forget the executive branch with this uh, hologram there right now. But still, you know, even, even when there was a public in there, there's systemic problems. You need to secure your own future. And you know what happens, Megan, it's sad, but who gets squeezed the most? It's the middle class and the lower class. The rich are going to always make money and be very rich. And that, that, that's a, that's, you know, that, that top 5%, they're going to be okay. It's everyone else that gets screwed. So, and, and I think the trap that people fall into when they invest, and this is the essence of the book is that, when you look at how much money you have to invest or, how, you know, what do you have in your savings account or stock account? You say, well, you know, I don't have that much. I have maybe a five or 10 or $20,000, whatever it might be. That's not enough to build, you know, massive wealth. But I have to hit a home run. I have to find the next Apple computer. I have to find the next Bitcoin or some, you know, penny stock. You start to think you need massive returns to get ahead. And that's the opposite of the truth. You don't. By investing in actually the best stocks in a certain way and, in, and relying on long-term compounding, 
which is, you know, every single year you're compounding the profits from the previous, you could take a very small amount of money and turn it into millions of dollars over time. So but how the, do you the, figure the out? Show, I know you say, you say in the book, you've got to figure out, you've got to sort of see the good news coming on a stock before everybody else sees it, because otherwise, you know, then, you know, you, you lose the advantage of the stock raise after mm -hmm. you bought it at a lower number. But that seems easier said than done. Like if we could figure that out, we'd all be, you know, making money on Wall Street. People, how are you supposed to do it? Like the best scheme it's, I ever saw not, was in trading places said, where they did it yeah, illegally. Yeah. But <laughs> if, not, for those of us who have to do it legally. Done. Yeah, it's not easier said than done. It's almost impossible. You can't do it. And, and what I say in the book is that, you know, if you want to speculate, that's fine. So take a small portion of your money, let's say 5% of the money that you have and speculate, try to time the market, pick individual stocks, you know, invest before the news comes out and try to be on the right side of that news. So you make a lot of money really quickly, right? That's a fool's game. That's not how you make money in the stock market. That, and that's been historically proven by every academic study going back to the early 1900s. And this is not just for average investors, the top investors, the top hedge fund managers, the top mutual fund managers, analysts, they can't pick a stock any better than the average person. And I'm, I'm not even kidding with this. Every study has proven this. And especially after you include all the fees and performance bonuses and ticket charges and expenses and everything else that they hit you for. And by the way, in the hedge fund world, it's like, if you, they win, they take 20%. If they lose, you pay all the losses. So it's heads they win, tails you lose, right? So it's a total mm -hmm. con job. And, and, and the thing is, you don't need to do that. There's a far better way than go, to invest. And it's not about timing the market. And it's not about trying to beat the news cycle. You, you're going to lose more often than not that way, all right? Look at it this way, right? So when you go into a casino, right, typically the odds are against you, what, by 5%, maybe 7%, depending on the game. Right. So when you go in there, you can expect that over time, most people are going to lose. But then if you walk into a corrupt casino where they have loaded dice or dealing from the bottom of the deck, you're going to lose 50 percent, 80 percent of the time. Right. You're almost always going to lose it's a, a huge edge right to the house. Well, that's Wall Street. You're, you're dealing against the cor corruption there where they have faster computers than you access to news before you have it, right? They're doing things that are, are, are illegal on a daily basis. And we all know that's happening. We all know it's happening at the biggest firms down to the smallest ones. So if you want to play in that corrupt casino, you're going to get slaughtered. So like the old movie War Games, remember War Games with Matthew Broderick? Of course. The only way to win is not to play. You can't play that game. But on the flip side, Wall Street does create massive value for the US and for that matter, the global economy. So Wall Street's a necessary part of the economy for its functioning. They take companies public, they see which ones are worthy of further financing, they secure the credit markets, the debt markets. We need Wall Street. So they have served this mission critical function on one side, which is the good side. And then the other side, they create bubbles and rip your eyeballs out with extra fees, commissions, and so <laughs> forth. So the question really is, how do you extract, as an as a average person here in America or elsewhere, how do you extract your share, your fair share of the value that Wall Street creates without getting caught up in the corrupt casino and, the, and losing it all. That's the strategy that I offer in the book. And by the way, it's the exact strategy that Warren Buffett would give you and any really legitimate top investor would tell you, this is the way you do it. And I'll tell you, the short story is it starts with having the biggest position in the no commission, ultra low expense, S&P 500 index fund. That's where it starts. Like that's one big position you're going to want to have and your main position. And then you're going to want to have that in certain types of accounts, tax-free accounts when possible. There's a number of those, but also just your general account. And then you want to be adding to that position just a little bit each month, whether it's $50, $100, hopefully a lot more. But whatever you can add to that slowly over time without worrying, saying, oh, I don't know. I think the economy is going to do bad next year. So I'm going to get out of stocks and sit in cash or go into oil. Or, like if you listen to like Jim Cramer on CNBC, I mean, this guy's like, you know, he's like a toxic Avenger, this guy. I mean, he's telling you to, to, to trade this for that and try to time the market. You don't win like that. No one wins that he's way. He's always except, wrong. Uh, I mean, it's like a joke, but it's like, you know, and his knowledge base is, is vast. But you know, he's giving the worst advice in the world as, as almost everyone else on CNBC. So that's a real trap. You watch it and you're like, oh, maybe I should be selling my stocks today or, or selling this sector right now because the economy seems to be slowing down. That's nonsense. That's not how you make money in the stock market. You need to buy and hold for like 20, 30 years. Seriously, mm -hmm. it might seem like a long time, but it's actually not. You just because you, you don't buy individual stocks, you buy the whole index, the S&P 500. Why do you do that? I'll tell you why. Number one, it's the 500 biggest, baddest, most profitable companies in the United States. 
In addition, about 40% of their business comes from overseas. So you get overseas exposure as well. Number two, all right? They are not the same companies that they were five years ago. Every three months, the S&P meets the index committee and they replace the companies that are not doing as well, becoming less relevant. They also reweight the index to reflect the U.S. economy. So at any given moment, the S&P 500 represents the best companies, the most relevant companies and the weighting of the U.S. economy. So you're buying the U.S. economy. Now, you might say, well, isn't the economy in the shitter? Like, or isn't it going to go bad? Isn't there all these systemic problems? The answer is yes, but it's like the best bad option out there. In other words, mm-hmm. the money's got to go somewhere, right? And what happens is, you know, I don't care how bad the world is doing. I think Apple is going to have a bright future, as is Google. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, these big companies are massive. They're multinationals. They're very well run. And when they fall from grace, which they do from time to time, they get replaced. After a crazy day of politics as usual, we all deserve an uplifting dose of plush perfection. And when I say plush perfection, I am talking about the seriously soft and incredibly comfy cuddle blanket from Cozy Earth. Here is why you're going to be addicted to the cuddle blanket. First of all, it's just amazing. It's awesome. The cuddle blanket is a faux fur, that's nice faux, ultra plush pile blanket that literally wraps you in a soft, warm cocoon of pure luxury. Oh, I have one. It's like heaven on earth. You wrap it around you and the stress of the day melts away. The cuddle blanket is generously sized so you can easily share that warmth. And speaking of sharing, it's perfect for gifting. Everyone loves a blanket as a gift. It's It, it doesn't matter what you've earned, what you haven't earned, where you are, where you, are, where you live, where you don't live. Everyone loves a cuddle blanket. It's double-sided, it's perfectly weighted, like a warm, comforting hug, even draped over your sofa or armchair. It's neutral color and faux fur texture, adds a touch of warmth to any space. Elevate your cozy moments with the Cuddle Blanket. Hurry, save 40% off the Cuddle Blanket now. This offer will not last, so go to CozyEarth.com, enter my promo code MEGAN for 40% off now. That's CozyEarth.com, promo code M-E-G-Y-N. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.